I just finished analyzing 43,370 websites to figure out what's working and not working in SEO right now. And in today's video, I'm gonna go over exactly how I was able to do that analysis, which websites caught my eye that were winning, which websites caught my eye that were losing, how to replicate the successes of the winners, and how to avoid the pitfalls and failures of the losers. So I'm just gonna jump right into my screen here and uh, share exactly how I'm able to analyze so many sites so fast. So I have currently a list of about 40,000 sites that that uh, I pull down data for each month. And here you can see the range, so January versus November. And I'm always comparing against the first month of the year just to see uh, if these sites are trajecting up or down. And what I'll do is uh, compare the current month against back in January. And then I'll just do deltas. I'll just, you know, simple math, right? In, a, in an Excel sheet. So I'll do this analysis, then skim through it and see which websites are doing really well or not. And that's basically how this works. So the first website that caught my eye that's doing really well is called is this site called Golfstead. Now Golfstead, really simple website, and let me actually pull it up here. It is uh, just a simple blog roll uh, and content about golf. I'm gonna pull up the site also in Ahrefs as we go through this. And really why I think this site is doing well is because of the content. If you read the content, it is written in first person, most of it, and it's clearly written by an expert at golf. So whoever's running this site hired a golf expert. And it's easy to consume images, good links here, buttons that show me what to do. Uh, you got tables occasionally, decent sidebar, uh, you know, a search function. It looks decent on mobile. Like overall, I don't mind this site. And I think they do an okay job. And they're very, uh, thorough in their content library. They have like over 300 articles. So if we actually look at their top pages over here, you can see 380 articles, clearly a lot of content. And actually really quick, let me just wanna show you the sites that I'm looking at. So we looked at Aquarium Source, Golfstead, Pest Samurai, Jules Advisor, That Painter, and Dog Endorsed. These are the three that were improving the most, and these are the three that declined the most. And you can see that Golfstead, 380 pages, 227 uh, best pages, right? So I'm always looking at that and I'm always like, hey, how much content does this have that's like best? So it feels a little high to me right now, but uh, it's fine. It seems to be working for them, right? Because their traffic chart looks pretty good. And I think it's because their content quality. Now, I do also like their backlink profile. I think they have a bunch of niche links that I think is supporting the growth of this site. And if you go back to my tab here, not a lot of links in the blacklist, uh, only nine, which is great. 7% of their black blacklist. We're getting into an example with that painter that had 30% of their links on the blacklist. Uh, if you don't know what the blacklist is, don't worry, we're gonna get into it in a second, but Golfstead, Golfstead doing a really good job. I think that's why they're growing. Got the backlink profile and pretty good content quality. The SEO architecture could be better. You know, the internal linking uh, does look pretty good here. I mean, just this one article, I'm just seeing a bunch of internal links to articles that make sense. So I think that's definitely helping them. Let's see, Stealth Irons, yep. So overall, pretty good job. The next site I wanna look at is Aquarium Source here. So let's look at that site. So Aquarium Source is does a really good job also with content quality. If you go through, I mean, again, clearly written by a content expert, pretty good internal linking here. Love the table of contents that's open by default. I'm not a big fan of closed by default table of contents. Nobody actually engages with it. Uh, but they got images here, it looks like Let's check the alt text really quick. Alt text has good con good, you know, it has rich alt text. A little over on the top on the images are the ads. So I don't love that, but they do have these call out boxes. Love that. Takes a minute to write those. So I think good on this author. Yeah, again, really good content quality. And I think they're doing a great job at that. If we pull them up also in Ahrefs to check their backlink profile, you can see. Uh, that also has a number of good links. They got a Wikipedia link, build your aquarium. You got Oriami, like this one looks like it's not English, but that, I think that might be okay. Um, they do have home stratosphere, which I know is a link on my blacklist. So I don't love that. Uh, aquarium Genius, uh, which might have been removed, but ultimately it was helping them for some time. Tank Aquarium, they have a bunch of niche links. So I'm loving that. I think ultimately that's why this site's doing well. Better Care of Fish Guide, Bubbly Pet, all really great signals and great links. So I think between the content quality and the backlinks, this site is doing well. Plus they have a decent uh, SEO architecture 
and I think that's really helping them. The next site I want to get into is Pest Samurai. So Pest Samurai, if you know me, you know I had a pest site called Pest Strategies. I sold it for over a million bucks back in 2019. I think I've inspired a lot of people to start pest control sites and uh, destroy pests, and I feel like Thomas might be one of them down here. But I love the authorship right on the homepage. This is very much a traditional blog, um, and it does look like a trellis blog. If you're not familiar, Mediavine, the ad provider for this website, has a, a theme called trellis, and it is a is like a um, out of the box sort of like optimized theme for WordPress and bloggers. So it looks like this guy is using that. If I pop into some of his articles, love that he has a table of contents. Don't love that it's not open by default. I don't think anybody probably engages with it. Scrolling through, he's got images that probably have alt text. Let's check. His alt is a little weak, it just says leaf miner. I would have liked to see that be a little bit more uh, descriptive, but overall not bad. Um, I don't love that as H1s and H twos and h3s are like not bold well his h1 is his h2s are not <laughs> i would like to see that better but i think he's winning again on content quality because this is actually pretty good and if we check his backlinks similar to um similar to the other sites you can see that his backlinks are pretty good um now cnn indonesia although i don't think it's a an english site or an american site it is dr82 um so that's probably helping somewhat but he does have this gardening channel link, measuring know-how, go past, see notes, DR20, house digest. Uh, that's one that I see a lot in, ba bad, um, in, in my blacklist and in, in people's backlink profiles who are buying links. So I don't love that. I have bed bugs, DR5, liquids and solids. So, I mean, skimming through his backlink profile, it's not a bad one. You know, he's got, he's got a bunch of links that are not bad. I haven't seen these before. And I think that's probably why he's doing okay. And also his, his content library is quite thorough. If we go to his top pages, you can see that he has a lot of content. It looks like most of his traffic is actually coming from this page, small black bugs in house. So <laughs> if that tells you anything, I think this site is probably making most of its money from display ads and not a lot of affiliate, which is interesting. And if we go back to my table here, you can see that, okay, they do have a, a quite a few best articles but you know, a ton of content nonetheless, and only four LRDs on the blacklist. So I think overall, these sites are doing a great job. Declining sites, so Jules Advisor. So uh, if you know me, I had this site, Jewel, uh, Learning Jewelry, that I sold back in 2021 for half a million. This site, uh, Jules Advisor, is a copycat site that is kind of all over the place. If you look them up in uh, Ahrefs here, you'll see that their traffic chart is very up and down um and that's interesting in that you know where did that traffic come from and where did it go now if you look at this site for any amount of time you can see that they're very broad like this guy went really broad he's not really talking about jewelry anymore he's got like random articles about uh comb attachment blow dryers i'm not really sure why he's doing this but maybe he thinks he can make some money on this but i think it's just going to hurt him because it's going to create it's going to dilute the relevant of it, relevance of his site. He's definitely not going to rank well on this term. Let's see if he's actually ranking well on this term. Jules. Yeah, he's not. He's not even top 100. Is it even indexed? Let's see. It is indexed. So, all right. Let me try this one more time. Yeah, he's not, he's not ranking top 100. So it's not working for him. I don't know why he's doing it. If we pull up his site in top pages, you can see this, the pages where he's getting a lot of traffic. He does have a ton of pages. So it makes me think that maybe it's an AI generated site because of how much content is on this site. To pay for 800 pages would be a lot of content. So that's concerning. Uh, how much is a quarter? Yeah, I mean, that's how he's making his money. So I'm not sure about that. Overall, I think this site is, is losing because it's just super broad. And I mean, obviously the UX isn't great. A lot of ads, not a lot of rhyme or reason about this site. The about a bus page is actually not terrible, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's not great. Not a great copycat site. The next one I wanted to look at is That Painter. This is a really good example of a site that got crushed because I think because of links. So if you think, if you look at their backlink profile here and I'll open up the site, on the front end here, 
it doesn't look like a bad site on the front end. A little over aggressive on the best content here, and it does look like you know only 24% of the content is best, so it's not terrible. I don't know why he's featuring it so much on the home page. Don't think I would do that. It's funny that he also has House Digest in here. I don't think again a lot of sites have House Digest in their backlink profile. It's a signal to me that this site is selling links. House Digest. So anyway, that painter. Uh, if you look at their uh, articles here, you can see where he's getting his traffic. Best epoxy tabletop, so it looks like he lost some rank there. But if you go to the backlinks, this is where I think they're, he, this guy got crushed. And a lot of his links are from blacklist sites, right? Just skimming through, I know Impressive Interior Design is a blacklist site. And if I, I bumped up all of his links against my blacklist and 48 were on it, right? So if you don't know what the blacklist is, let me share this. So I have a list of, let's see, 11,995 websites that are what I call blacklist. These are sites that I've found that uh, sell links. And what I do is anytime I come across a link agency, uh, that gives me their list of sites they can get, they can get access to. I add it to my blacklist. I'm like, I don't want links from that site, uh, those sites, because I'm going. I don't want to associate my website with sites that are actively selling links. I have a, I'm, I have a strong POV that Google can see the connection, and you basically associate yourself with these bad neighborhoods that then. Uh, could hurt your site, like could actually create negative value. Some people would say, hey, well, if the site isn't um, valuable or like Google doesn't like the site, it just won't give you uh, the link equity, right? It'll just be no value. It'll just devalue it and no harm, no foul. I don't think that's true. I think you actually could create, you could actually be penalized for sites that are, if you have too many sites in your backlink profile that are selling links, that have sold their links, that's going to create problems for you. So. That's what I'm seeing with that painter. So let me go back to my screen here. A lot of their links are from these websites. In fact, again, I have my number here, 30%. So not good. Um, the last site I have in here is Dog Endorsed. They are a classic example of a site that has just bad UX. So if I go to their site, uh, Dog Endorsed here, um, and they also have a lot of um, pages. You know, very, you know, if you go to their thing here, 29% are best, which isn't terrible, um, but I really did not like the UX of the articles, and I don't think a lot of these pages, like it's just not, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me, and it's also like there's no outbound links here. Uh, I don't, I see very few internal links. The SEO isn't very good on this site, uh, and if you check their backlinks of Dog Endorse, I think they also have a handful of blacklists. Not, actually, not that many. Now that I take that back, not that many, but still, I think the UX of the site is it's what's hurting it the most and not meeting user intent. I think that's where they're getting hurt the most. So let me just move on to uh, how to replicate the winners, right? So at the end of the day, to, to replicate the winners, you gotta build ba great backlinks. Aquarium Source was a great example of a site with a really great backlink profile that had niche links. At the end of the day, building niche links will put you in a uh, in a better spot. Um, and also put some time into UX. I didn't mind uh, the UX from uh, Aquarium Source's website. I thought it was pretty good. I mean, it was a simple blog style, but it, it served its purpose well. It had bold headers, easy to follow, a table of contents, loving that. Now, how to avoid failures, right? So again, you don't want links on these link farms. I actually did, an, the analysis is right here. And you can see that uh, that painter had 48 blacklisted LRDs here, and you can see exactly which of those are. So Scubby, uh, Impressive Interior Design, Mom Blog Society, Tech Times, E-Architect, Residence Style, Optimistic Mommy. Again, I see that site all the time in people's backlink profiles. You do not want your backlink profile to look like this. Okay, all of these links here, if your site has too many of these links in its backlink profile, relative to the rest of the links in your backlink profile, you put yourself at high risk to be penalized, basically penalized. Whatever traffic you've accumulated, it might go away if your backlink profile looks like this. Instead, your backlink profile should look like this. Only four um, links. Golfstead, only nine. You know, a few in here, sure, but not that many. Aquarium Source, 
Uh, they had actually 23. Let me check my numbers on that. Yeah, 10%. Now, they had a lot, they had a, a fair bit, of, but they had enough other good links that made those 23 not as much of a problem. So that's really important. And then don't let your editorial strategy get too broad, right? Best comb attachment blow dryers. Don't, just don't, right? Keep it on topic, keep it pointed. And that's all I got. Make sure you like and subscribe if you like this content. Hit the ring, ring the bell, and again, like the content if you like it. If you have any comments or questions or want me to clarify anything for this video, let me know in the comments down below. Um, love making these videos. I'm probably gonna do this maybe monthly. If you want me to do it monthly, again, leave a comment down below. I can take a, a look at the sites that went up or down in my list and then report back to, to, uh, to y'all. So anyway, that's all I got in today's video. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.